Say bye, Nathan. Okay, it is now uh, April 3rd, 2010, and uh, nice spring day. As you can see, the white peach is blooming, Shotzi's panting, the windows of the house are open, so it's not that hot, but it's nice. My dogwood tree is now coming into bloom, but... If we look all the way down along these fence lines that I have, you will see it is a junglish mess. So, I cannot keep the vines and little trees from growing up along the fence line without using chemicals. And I don't have goats like the previous owner has, to eat along my fence lines. And because the vines that are growing are pulling down the fences, and that's why they're so wobbly and so messy, I've decided, and I have, I should say, cut down these vines numerous times till the fence lines were clean. But nothing grown on them. In the 12 years I've lived in here, I've done it twice. And now everything, as you see, has just grown back. Grown back. It's just so dang verdant and it grows so well. So this is what I'm going to do. Uh, I still am reluctant to spray so much herbicide and poison on my land when I'm growing or trying to grow like over here peaches and apple trees and on the other side grapes and my garden, vegetable garden. So since I don't have animals and I don't intend on getting animals this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna clear off the brush one last time and I'm going to take down the fence that's right I'm gonna knock the boards loose and burn them I'm gonna take the wire and cut it all down and take it to the landfill or the scrap yard I suppose being wire they can get something for it and I'm gonna remove the posts which are these old creosote posts. I might actually use them in my raised beds in the garden. I don't know. Depends on their condition. And have no more fence. If you didn't know how this all gets started, it's very simple. This, for example, is Japanese honeysuckle. And it's got some really pretty and wonderful blooms on it. But, that forms these little berries that the birds eat. Especially in the winter time. There's not much left of the berries, as you can see right here. They're all dried out and just about ready to fall. But, through the months of November and December and January, these bushes, or these vines, were loaded with berries. And, of course, This plant right here is Chinese privet. And the Japanese, and it also produces massive amount of berries that hang on the plants all winter long. Here's just one that is left right here, the end of this. But in any case, the birds eat all those too. And the nature of things is, when the birds eat the berries, they start to digest the berries. And then, they may be sitting on a fence post here, which is a great place if the fences, especially if they are clear, but nothing growing on them, provides a great place to observe things and look for other birds and all the things that birds do in their bird world but when the spirit moves them and the berries have been completely digested the waste uh, comes right out while they sit on the fence and the waste falls on the ground right under the fence 
And it just turns out that the seed of these berries, especially Japanese honeysuckle and Chinese privet, survives the passage through the bird's elementary canal. And fertilized very nicely, in the springtime the seed awakens, puts out roots and shoots, and the rest is history. Then I got a mess on my hands. Now the people that had the land before me, 13 years ago, had goats. And they had goats in this pasture here, and they had goats in that pasture beyond here. And the goats ate all the young shoots of all the dirt, uh, if you want to call it bird, accidentally planted, digested berries, and nothing grew along the fence, which is a good thing. But I don't have goats. All I got are dogs. And because of this, the plants grow. And because I'm reluctant to spray herbicide or anything else that would kill it, like most people do around here, it continues to grow. And I try mechanical means to remove it, such as things like this, and saws and stuff. And I think when I use those mechanical means, all I ever do is cause more vigorous growth and more shoots and as you see it all comes back and look how thick and fat they get just in a short period of time so if there is no fence my mower can ride right over what once was a fence line as if it was just a lawn and anything growing there will be cut down and as long as it's cut down like grass being a herbaceous plant it needs leaves and stems to keep itself alive. The roots will die and that will be that. And because there's no more fence, there'll be no more place for a bird to alight and then have a bowel movement on that fence line. So there won't be any new berries or new, I should say, seeds. And that will be that. So that's my plan. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do it in a short period of time because it's a lot of work. I've got a lot of fence line. Some of the fence line I will not take down and it will just continue to be a massive verdant tangled mess of a hedge and that's all right. But these other fence lines that make my property look so ugly and unkempt will now be gone. It's not going to happen overnight. I'm not going to be able to do it probably even in this whole springtime. And into the hot Alabama summer, I'll do a little here and a little there. So by the fall, I should have at least the fence down from here all the way down to the road. And then the rest of this fence from here all the way up to here. I'll leave, uh, Actually, I want to leave the fence if I can, which just surrounds my yard. I'm going to take the gate, which is broken now, off. But I'm going to leave the white pillars and that part of the fence right there, I'll probably just repaint it. And at some future time, I will go ahead and get um, maybe some of that recycled plastic fence, that vinyl fence, which doesn't need painting. Uh, what I won't do is put hog wire back up like the previous owners. The hog wire, incidentally, as shown here, you know, it just provides both lateral and vertical paths for these vines to wrap around. So it's very, very difficult to, cl to clear. I think if all I had is boards, then it, wouldn't, it would be a lot easier. For example, I could probably get my mower deck more or less underneath there to cut down most that grows. And the little bit that's left, I can nip in the bud with clippers. So... I think as long as I don't have any of this hog fence, I'll be okay, and I could put some kind of fence back up, but that won't happen this year. So, I'm going to get back to work. My next goal right here is to cut as many of these vines off of this gate, and then I'm going to remove, uh, take the, the uh, hinges off the gate and go uh, take it somewhere, I'll burn probably the wood, and then scrap the metal that's left. So, without much further ado, here I go.